A horde of goblins led by a cave troll smashes the doors down and blocks the entrance to Barlin's tomb. As Frodo's sword Sting illuminates the room as dozens of goblins pour in. Today, we paint Frodo Baggins. Frodo was first sprayed with some Army Painter Leather Brown Primer. As I wanted a neutral looking colour to start off with, especially as we will be working with some reds, browns and greens today. Speaking of which, his cloak was painted first and this was with a couple layers of angel green. Being the first colour painted onto the miniature, you don't have to worry too much about being neat and precise. For example, if you get any onto his trousers, then this doesn't matter as we are going to paint them in a moment. The red on the jacket and the brown trousers were done afterwards. This time they were added carefully as to not go over the previous paint stage. As these are pretty much the smallest miniatures in the range, don't worry about making mistakes as it can be quite easy to do so. You can always go back and repaint a layer and tidy up when you need to. And if you can paint a tiny little hobbit, then painting something much bigger would seem a lot easier. His waistcoat was given a once over with the leather brown, the same colour as our initial spray. The nice thing on this sculpt is that it's not too detailed, so it makes painting these smaller hobbits quite fun and enjoyable. And they can be completed in just a short amount of time. All of the skin tones were then picked out next with some tanned flesh. I find this colour a nice go-to as a base coat for painting skin as there are a few nice lighter colour tones to choose from to give us some paler highlights later on. Like our cloak earlier, don't worry about getting any colour onto his hair, as that's next. The brown for his hair was slightly lighter in colour than that of his trousers, just so the two parts of the miniature didn't have the same colours going on. And with just a few colours in, acting as our base coats, we have our Hobbit from the Shire starting to take shape. For the blade, we are going to do two versions of this today, one of which will be a glowing sting, so we will leave that to the very end. For a quick transformation to bring a miniature to life, a few shape paints were used next. This is my favourite stage. It creates quick shading to a miniature with minimal effort. For example, the folds in the cloak have been darkened down, and I also used a finger to take the paint off of the top surface, just to help with layering a lighter colour later on. The key is to not use too much so it doesn't swamp an area with paint, but just enough to go into the recesses of the sculpt, and create some shaded areas on the miniature. Mid-brown was not only used to give shade to our waistcoat, but also to change the colour of the jacket slightly to make it a duller looking red. Now, we have used the shade paints to go over a whole area so far, but this time some dark tone was placed into some specific areas to darken them down, such as the creases in the trousers, as well as giving the cloak a darker shade in the folds. You can see that a shadow line was also painted on where the two sections of the waistcoat meet to make the area more defined. For the remainder of the miniature, we are going to work in bite-sized chunks and do a section at a time. Using a detail brush now, a leather brown was added back onto the waistcoat, but leaving the darker, recessed areas alone. And this was followed up with some monster brown as a highlight. For an even lighter highlight, which I would say is optional, but it does give a nice crisp finish to the waistcoat should you wish to do one. Banshee Brown was the colour of choice here. You only need to add a very minimal thin line here, and if you are feeling confident, you can pick out those little buttons as well. His trousers also had a couple of highlights added, mainly to pick out the creases and the knees, as well as the bottom of the cloth also. With these stages, it's important to maintain a good point to your brush. It will just make picking out these smaller areas much easier. 
Now for the jacket. It's going to be given a slight colour alteration to the red that we have got going on currently. Uh, to do this, some fur brown paint was heavily watered down to make it fairly translucent. And it will act kind of like a filter on our red cloth. This technique is known as glazing. And applying this very thin down paint over the red cloth will change the colour ever so slightly. The more layers you add on, the more of this new colour you will see. But for Frodo here, only a couple of layers were added to give it a slightly paler outcome. Once that had dried, some non-watered down fur brown was added as a highlight to the edges of the cloth. Again, like the waistcoat, a second brighter highlight was used to pick out the areas further, this time using tanned flesh. When you pick out areas like these, it gives the eye more to focus on, especially when you have a darker area right next to our highlights. Now for the tricky bit, the eyes. This was a little bit more difficult on this miniature. Not only do I have a camera in front of my face recording, but also the sculpt is quite old and the details on the face are a bit flat. Oh, and there's also the case of it being teeny tiny. So a nice steady hand is pretty key here. And after finishing the tiny ant-like eyes, it was on to the skin. Some colourful shading of red was added onto some of the areas, such as the lower cheeks and in between the fingers and toes, just to enhance the shadows from the flesh tone that we have already created. I tend to do this on most of my miniatures these days, as it adds a nice subtle shade to the skin tones once complete. As with the red, some barbarian flesh was thinned down to a similar consistency, however this time it was layered on with a fine tip brush to brighten up the skin. Make sure to leave the recesses alone here. This lighter colour will be applied to the majority of the top surface of Mr Frodo. And finally, to bring out the details of this sculpt even further, cobalt skin was the colour of choice to highlight the more prominent areas of the skin. Here you can see his facial features being picked out, such as the nose, top of the cheeks, lip and jawline. As well as his knuckles and his tiny toes on his little feet. Speaking of his feet, the hair was given a singular highlight of Monster Brown afterwards. This was dotted onto the sculpt to pick out the hair strands with a fine tip brush. And boy do you need some good brushes for these miniatures. I will leave a list of products as always in the description of the video for you to check out just in case you may need to top up on any hobby supplies. For the cloak, this was painted in the same method as we did the jacket, by heavily thinning down the paint with water. The colour that we want is to be a little bit brighter than our current green. So some elf green was watered down significantly and then applied onto the upper surface of the cloth. Again, leaving the recesses well alone. This was done over a few layers until I was satisfied with the colour. The nice thing about doing it this way is that you can build up the colour to your own preference. And the same thing was done with the army green afterwards, but focusing more on the upper sections and the folds of the cloth. This will just give it a nice gradual highlighted appearance. Once dry, army green was used afterwards to select the edges and the folds of the cloth for our highlights. And whilst that's being painted, I'd like to give a big shout out to my lovely patrons for their support and helping make the Swords and Brushes community what it is. We have monthly challenges, a chatty discord where we help each other out and share what we are working on, and you also get access to PDF painting guides and patron-only videos, to name a few things. There are further details in the description should you wish to know more. As promised, we are going to paint his weapon, Sting, in two ways. We'll do the traditional metal look on the current one that's being painted, because hey, he may not always be facing orcs and goblins, right? This was first done by adding some gunmetal as a base coat. 
and then followed up by using a wash of dark tone, letting it dry, and then picking out the edge of the sword for the highlights with some shining silver. And now onto a glowing sting. I'll be painting over a sword from an older miniature I did a while ago. And the blade was base coated with void shield blue whilst the handle guard was left silver. This is a good middle ground blue to start with as we are going to add some darker and lighter areas on afterwards. Viking blue was next and this was added onto the end of the blade as well as near the handle guard. This is going to be the start of our transition for the blade. Now, as Sting is going to be glowing, and Frodo is currently situated in the depths of Moria somewhere, we are going to have some added object source lighting coming from the sword, and this will be present on the base and the miniature to represent this. So the paint was heavily thinned down with water and applied to the surrounding areas. I'm wanting this colour to tint what is already there. It's better to go slowly and add multiple thin layers than just one thick layer. Using Ice Storm next was the paint that really brought together this glowing effect. The light blue colour gave a bit more intensity to the glow. I didn't cover all of the previous layer, but only partially just to create a gradient of this new light blue colour with the darker one previously. I also carefully picked out the edges of the sculpt for the cloth to give it a slightly brighter highlighted glow. The eye storm paint was also applied to the centre of the sword blade to give that a lighter colour. As with highlighting the metal blade, this was also done for our new glowing version. It will bring out the edges of the sword and give it some shape. And of course I gave the rock on the base a watered down treatment of this paint too. Finally to tie it all in, royal cloak that had been also heavily thinned down was glazed over the white areas of the base and Frodo's clothing. I felt that if I had left this white, it would have been too intense. So adding a thin layer of this greenish blue knocked it back slightly. Overall, I'm happy with my first real attempt at object source lighting after all these years of not having a go. And that's one of the fun things about this hobby, just to enjoy painting miniatures and trying something different to what you normally do. You may surprise yourself with what you can achieve. And be sure to check out the rest of the Fellowship playlist. And until next time, keep on hobbying.